Hi, all my favorite human beings and your parents and guardians. Welcome to our Zoom Big Friendly Giant lesson for chapters three and four. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you listen to Miss Crow's read the first two chapters of the book. And today we are going to go through the next two chapters. So the first thing we're going to do is just review what we're doing pretty quickly. Today you are going to have in your BFG comprehension packet, you have on page three, the quick rate for chapters three and four. So chapters three and four are the snatch and the cave. For your quick rate, you're gonna take about three minutes to write down and describe the scariest moment you've ever had. So you're gonna tell us the scariest moment you've ever experienced and you're gonna take about three minutes to do so. When you're done with that, we're gonna go over our vocabulary terms. So I want you to go on, take three minutes and describe the scariest moment you have ever experienced. Please press pause, take a few moments, write it down. And then when you're ready, come back to us. Did you take your three minutes? I hope so. All right. The vocabulary for chapters three and four, we have the word cavern, which is a large and mostly underground cave. We have the word desolate, which means barren or solitary. So it's alone and kind of empty. And then we have craggy, which is rugged, which can mean kind of rough. Today on pages three and four of our comprehension guide, you're gonna do some vocabulary work. You're gonna fill in these three blanks with the proper vocabulary term that makes sense. You're going to answer the true or false questions, which we will go over. We are going to answer three comprehension questions. And then finally, we are going to do a beyond question where you are going to imagine that you are Sophie and that you have been kidnapped by a giant. So let's do a quick review of what we're looking for as we read. During our comprehension time, we need to ask ourselves, what does Sophie think that the giant is going to do with her? Describe where the giant brings Sophie and what do you predict will happen to Sophie? So we're gonna try to remember these questions and prompts during the actual reading. So let's get to it. Let's start our reading. I hope you have your book with you or at least your packet. So this is the cover of The Big Friendly Giant, and you're going to go to page 11 in the packet. So this starts out with chapter three, The Snatch. So follow along as I read. Under the blanket, Sophie waited. After a minute or so, she lifted a corner of the blanket and peeped out. For the second time that night, her blood froze to ice and she wanted to scream, but no sound came out. There at the window with the curtains pushed aside was an enormous, long, pale, wrinkly face of the giant person staring in. The flashing black eyes were fixed on Sophie's bed. The next moment, a huge hand with pale fingers came snaking through the window. This was followed by an arm, an arm as thick as a tree trunk, and the arm, the hand, the fingers were reaching out across the room towards Sophie's bed. This time Sophie really did scream, but only for a second because very quickly the huge hand clamped down over the blanket and the scream was smothered by the bedclothes. Sophie crouching underneath the blanket felt strong fingers grasping hold of her. And then she was lifted up from her bed, blanket and all, and whisked out the window. If you can think of anything more terrifying than that happening to you in the middle of the night, let's hear about it. The awful thing was that Sophie knew exactly what was going on, although she couldn't see it happening. She knew that the monster or giant with an enormous, long, pale, wrinkly face and dangerous eyes had plucked her 
from her bed in the middle of the witching hour and was now carrying her out through the window, smothered in a blanket. What actually happened next was this. When the giant had got Sophie outside, he arranged the blanket so that he could grasp all the four corners of it at once in his huge hand, with Sophie imprisoned inside. In the other hand, he seized the suitcase and the long crumpet thing, and off he ran. Sophie, by squirming around inside the blanket, managed to push the top of her head out through a little gap just below the giant's hand. She stared around her. She saw the village rushing by on both sides. The giant was sprinting down High Street. He was running so fast, his black coat was streaming out behind him like the wings of a bird. Each stride he took was as long as a tennis court. Out of the village he ran. Soon they were racing across the moonlit fields. The hedges dividing the fields were no problem to the giant. He simply strode over them. A wide river appeared in his path. He crossed it in one flying stride. So here we see our giant just running across. Sophie crouched in the blanket, peering out. She was being bumped against the giant's leg like a sack of potatoes. Over the fields and hedges and rivers they went, and after a while, a frightening thought came into Sophie's head. The giant is running fast, she told herself, because he is hungry, and he wants to get home as quickly as possible, and then he'll have me for breakfast. Chapter 4 the cave. The giant ran on and on, but now a curious change took place in his way of running. He seemed to suddenly go into a higher gear. Faster and faster he went, and soon he was traveling at such a speed that the landscape became blurred. A, the wind stung Sophie's cheeks. It made her eyes water. It whipped her head back and whistled in her ears. She could no longer feel the giant's feet touching the ground. She had a weird sensation they were flying. It was impossible to tell whether they were over the land or sea. This giant had some sort of magic in his legs. The wind rushing against Sophie's face became so strong that she had to duck down again into the blanket to prevent her head from being blown away. Was it really possible that they were crossing oceans? It certainly felt that way to Sophie. She crouched in the blanket and listened to the howling of the wind. It went on for what seemed like hours. Then, all at once, the wind stopped its howling. The pace began to slow down. Sophie could feel the giant's feet pounding once again over the earth. She poked her head up out of the blanket to have a look. They were in the country. They were in a country of thick forests and rushing rivers. The giant had definitely slowed down and was now running more normally. Although normal was a silly word to use to describe a galloping giant. He leaped over a dozen rivers. He went rattling through a great forest, then down into a valley and up over a range of hills as bare as concrete. And soon he was galloping over a desolate wasteland that was not quite of this earth. The ground was flat and pale yellow. Great lumps of blue rocks were scattered around and dead trees stood everywhere like skeletons. The moon had long since disappeared and now the dawn was breaking. Sophie still peered out from the blanket and suddenly saw ahead of her a great craggy mountain. The mountain was dark blue and all around it the sky was gushing and glistening with light. Bits of pale gold were flying among the delicate frosty white flakes of cloud and over the one side of the rim of the morning sun was coming up red as blood. Right beneath the mountain, the giant stopped. He was puffing mightily. His great chest was heaving in and out. He paused to catch his breath. Directly in front of them, lying against the side of the mountain, Sophie could see a massive round stone. It was as big as a house. The giant reached out and rolled the stone to one side as easily as if it had been a football. And now where the stone had been, there appeared a vast black hole. 
The hole was so large, the giant didn't even have to duck his head as he went in. He strode into the black hole, still carrying Sophie in one hand, but pumping the suitcase in the other. As soon as he was inside, he stopped and turned and rolled the great stone back into place so that the entrance to his secret cave was completely hidden from the outside. Now that the entrance had been sealed up, there was not a glint of light inside the cave. All was black. Sophie felt herself being lowered to the ground. Then the giant let go of the blanket completely. His footsteps moved away. Sophie sat there in the dark, shivering with fear. Is he getting ready to eat me? She told herself. He will probably eat me raw, just as I am. Or perhaps he'll boil me first. Or will he have me fried? Will he drop me like a rasher of bacon into some gigantic frying sizzling pan with fat? A blaze of light suddenly lit up the whole place. Sophie blinked and stared. She saw an enormous cavern with a high rocky roof. The walls on either side were lined with shelves, and on the shelves there stood row upon row of glass jars. There were jars everywhere. They were piled up in corners. They filled every nook and cranny of the cave. In the middle of the floor, there was a, a table 12 feet high, and a chair to match. So here we have our drawing of all of these jars and those tiny little Sophie at the bottom. The giant took off his black cloak and hung it against the wall. Sophie saw that under the cloak he was wearing a sort of collarless shirt and a dirty old leather waistcoat that didn't seem to have any buttons. His trousers were faded green and far too short for his legs. On his bare feet, he was wearing a pair of ridiculous sandals that for some reason had holes cut along each side with a large hole at the end where his toes stuck out. Sophie, crouching on the ground, crouching on the floor of the cave, in her nightie gave back at him through thick steel rimmed glasses. She was trembling like a leaf in the wind and a finger of ice was running up and down the length of her spine. Ha, shouted the giant walking forward and rubbing his hands together. What has us got here? His booming voice rolled around the walls of the cave like a burst of thunder. That's the end of chapter four. So let's go and see what we can fill in. For our vocabulary, question one. It was very tricky to climb the blank wall without scratching or hurting myself. Take a moment and fill in the word you think. Question two or prompt two. The abandoned house was in the middle of nowhere. And so it felt very blank. Number three, our voices echoed around the stone walls as we explored the deep, dark blank. All right, take a moment and hit pause and fill in your three answers. And then when you're ready, we're going to move on to the true or false questions. True or false? Mark T for true and F for false. Number one, Sophie gets snatched up by the giant. Number two, the giant speaks to Sophie. Number three, Sophie recognizes the place where the giant brings her. Number four, the giant brings Sophie to a cavern. Number five, the giant moves very slowly. Take a moment, hit pause, and when you're ready, let's move on to the comprehension questions. Comprehension and analysis. Answer the questions in complete sentences. Number one, what does Sophie think that the giant is going to do with her? So remember you wanna start your sentence with, Sophie thinks that the giant is going to blank. So remember, you want a full sentence, a complete sentence that tells us what's going on. Take a moment, write your answer. Again, remember how to start it. Question two, describe where the giant brings Sophie. So to start this one, you could always say, the giant brings Sophie to and then you have to give a good description. You can't just use one word. 
for two. Take a moment, press pause and answer the question, please. Question three, what do you predict will happen to Sophie next? Well, we know what Sophie thinks. We think that, we know that she thinks she's going to be eaten somehow. Oh no. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you think Sophie will be eaten? Do you think that Sophie will escape? Tell us what you think. Take a moment, press pause and answer the question. And finally, your beyond question. Imagine that you are Sophie and that you have been kidnapped by the giant. What would your reaction be? Describe your emotions and tell what you might do. So take a few moments and answer this question. Remember, you're trying to make a relationship between you and Sophie. All right, don't forget to fill in your vocabulary words on your first page of your comprehension packet. And that's all for this day's reading. So have a good day. Mahalo for paying attention. Mahalo for sticking in there with us. And we will see you when we see you next. All right. Love you guys. Have a good little break.